you know, we, we make the plans, we have our own plans. This is, you know, we, we come into church, we have a certain thought of form that it's going to take place. By now, Pastor Ted, near the end of this sermon, so we can go home and do our thing. Uh, you know, but I begin to, you know, look at what God has given me, and I, can, I don't know how fast I can go through it, but I, I don't, I don't I want to be thoughtful to you folks, but at the same time, uh, you know, I want God to have his way. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I begin to think about the first Samuel's quote. It's not actually Samuel's what he was what talking about him that father, but he was like a, a, a good father. He was a good father of figure. Amen. So, I just want to talk about that. You know, I heard that like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, like a good father, Samuel was there. And see, even though there may not be a father per se in our life, there's father figures amen, in our life. Amen. And Samuel was there for the, the children of Israel at a time of need. He, he was a judge. He, he, was, he was important. Amen. You know, someone noticed this about fathers. And, and I'll, try to, I'll try to move briskly through this, but at the same time, I want you guys to be open and receptive. Think about this. In, in a dictionary, someone noticed that father appears in the, in the dictionary just before the word fatigue. I can understand that term for me. <laughs> I'm fatigued a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just after the word, they notice fathead. <laughs> so fatigue, father, that is a fathead. No, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, happy Father's Day, you fathers, anyway. And, you know, but I think about one little boy he find Father's Day, and he said, it's just like Mother's Day, only you don't have to spend as much money. <laughs> Amen? That's right. <laughs> I'm telling you what, you know, uh, <laughs> it's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. Great job. The one daughter, he, uh, he had a three-year-old daughter who was having trouble sleeping through the night. And so she'd often, she wake, would wake up several times a day because she was afraid, you know. You, you, you know, it, it happens. And each time he would reach out her in the bed and he would remind her that Jesus was with her. And, and then he would, that Jesus would keep her safe. And several nights in a row, she did this over and over again. Finally, one night, uh, the dad asked her if she had prayed to Jesus to take the fear away and to help her fall asleep. She said, oh, yes, he sure be and told me that you would come in and help me. That you would come. You know, that, that's what it is. As, we, as people pray, they expect someone to come. And she prayed. And she prayed to Jesus. But guess what? She expected her father to come. Amen. And guess what? As children of God, we need to understand that people are reaching out to a God. And they're reaching out. And sometimes we may be the only Jesus. We may be the only uh, a figure above them that they can look at and say, guess what? There is hope. And I want to find it. Amen. You know what? I thought about another story where it said, where, where the, the one was crying in the storm and came in and said, hey, hey, don't you know that Jesus is with you? He said, hey, I know God will take care of you and love me, but, but right now, Daddy, I want someone with skin on, amen? And sometimes we need to be those people, amen? Whether you're a father today or not, we, we need to understand that we need, that people need to be able to come to you and me as children of God, amen? That we can know that, that we are leaders, that people can come. No matter who we are, a father is supposed to be a leader. The head of the household. He's supposed to be there. And guess what? As children of God, we are the head and not the tail. God wants you and me, hallelujah, to be lifted up in Him, that we can be a light, that people can be drawn unto Him. Amen? Amen. People are afraid. Those kids were afraid, and they need comfort. Sometimes we get afraid because we get in trouble. Sometimes we get afraid because we're threatened. Sometimes we get afraid because we, we lose something or something's got not going away. We're worried about our job. We're worried about our bills. All these things. Sometimes we may be worried if we're, we're going to get punished. You know, daddy's coming home. I'm in trouble. Oh, no. I'm not looking forward to this. Oh, no. You know, the, the kid or the child or the person that is sorry because they got caught. Now they're sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, because they have the fear of, of what's going to happen now, you know. They weren't sorry because of what they did. They were sorry because they got caught. But we understand that, that God can be there. And it's, he, he wants to come to us in the hard times, in the rough times. And like the good father, Samuel was there in our story. Now, guess what? They had sinned against God. They had sinned because, because without asking God permission or approval, they decided to reject Samuel. And Samuel, as the leader, God had put him there as a leader. And they, they rejected him. And they demanded the king. They wanted their own king. The other people had their kings. We want our king. I want what they got. I, you know, that, that's what we can do. We, oh, I want, I want, I want. I, I should have that. 
God, why aren't you giving me this? I want this. I want this. I want that. It's like a spoiled little brat. When you keep whining to me, you're not getting it. That's what I tell my kid. I just want to tell hey, you're going to whine, you ain't getting nothing. Yeah, daddy got me sometimes. But man, guess what? They rejected God. It wasn't it was bad enough that they rejected Samuel. And, and you and me as children of God, as leaders, as fathers or, or mothers or, or grandparents, guess what? We are leaders. And guess what? We may have others that reject us. But guess what? They're really not rejecting us. They're rejecting God. Hallelujah. Guess what? If we are doing what God is telling us to do, and, and we're trying to be thoughtful, guess what? Samuel comes and he rebukes the people. And at Samuel's request, God sends a powerful storm filled with thunder, filled with lightning and rain. The people heard Samuel's words of rebuke, and they saw God's power. Punish. And they begged Samuel, they begged him to, to pray for them. And, and Samuel, that first Samuel 12 and 19, the word of God says, and, and all the people said, and all the people said unto Samuel, pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. They understood that they was wrong. Because guess what? They seen God coming down. They understood that they were coming down and they needed to get it right. They needed to go to somebody that was a leader, that was a father-like figure, a mother-like figure, a figure that one that they could come to and call on that could touch the throne of God. We need you. And guess what? People will come to you and me. I, I believe that we can learn from Samuel as he is a good example of a good parental figure. One of those basic responsibilities of a loving father is, is to discipline their children. Some parents don't want to. I won't be their buddy. Well, guess what? My sons are probably my best friends in the world. Other than my wife. You know what I'm saying? I got friends here too, but you know, they're my closest friends. But when they were a child, they were my friends too. But I told them, we get along good as long as you do what I tell you to do. They could probably all repeat first rule. Never disobey the rest of us. If I say no, if I say don't do it, do not do it. They knew that if they did not do what I said to do, punishment was coming. God warns us in His Word. I'm not trying to steer anybody, but we need to understand God's Word is true. When God speaks, He wants us to understand that we need to listen. <laughs> Amen? Like, yeah, like, yeah, but speaks. Uh, people, uh, when God speaks, people need to listen. Amen? And, and as a, a good father, Samuel was there. A good father will discipline. A good parent will discipline. Guess what? A good grandparent oh, will discipline. Yes. My, grand, uh, my, my grandbabies, they love my wife. Sometimes she lets them get away with a little more than she, she should. But she's getting better. <laughs> but they know Papa. They love their Papa. But they understand Papa will discipline them. I won't speak, but it's just as bad. I tell them, I tell them, let it go. And it's like, ah! I'm like, oh, man, I said no, buddy. But I was serious, you know. I, I turned my head like, oh, man. You know, like, I, I wouldn't see my face, you know, I even better. But, but, but sometimes we've got to understand that, that, that and as a good father, we, we will discipline. As a good parental figure, we will discipline. It tells us in Hebrews 12, 9, it says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? See, Samuel was a judge for Israel. He had set the standards that God for God's people. And, he had, and sometimes the, the judgments can they concern the, the things that, the, that people didn't want to hear. They didn't want to hear. And sometimes when the pastor's preaching or someone brings forth a truth, amen, we may not really want to hear. There's been times like that. I don't 
don't like that. I don't want that. But let God begin to deal with me. I need to keep my heart and mind open to hear what God wants to say to me. For example, when Samuel went to Bethlehem to anoint David to be the next king, in 1 Samuel 16, 4, it says, And Samuel did, and Samuel did, which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Promise thou peaceably? And guess what? They, they were trembling that he was coming. Oh, no. What are you going to say now? Oh, no. What's God telling you? Oh, no. They, are you coming peaceably? They were nervous. You know, just like a child that had done something wrong before daddy comes home, they they were going, oh no, what's going to happen now? Oh no, that is going to hit it now. And go out there. One time we had a big party going on. Oh, by the way, Mom, I confirmed it yesterday, and Mike, I can probably confirm it since Mike, Mike's still here. When we got in trouble, do you ever remember anything about a year and Mom's finger? I asked him, but he said he didn't Oh, well, just let's spin the over to you. Jesus is full of crap. David confirmed it, yes. More about pure, that's why I'm throwing this here now. I think she pulled them this here more. Well, I told your boys, I think I said, oh, if I told you, I do not remember Chris and Todd. And they said, Grandma, don't worry about it. He did a heck of a lot worse than that to us. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, hey. Uh, hey yeah. Maybe it's because I was behaved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why your name is still, your nickname is still the rat. <laughs> We know better than that. <laughs> oh, man. Because, you know, I to think about that. You know, the nervousness. Oh, no, what's going on? You know, good looking fathers, they set the standard of right or wrong in their homes. Amen? And even as grandparents, we got, we got to set the standards. You know, we don't have to always be the bad guy, but we need to be the one that sets the standards. This is right. This is wrong. You know, we need to help them to understand the right decision to make is to follow what God says. Amen? It can affect not only this life, but affect eternity. Amen? There was a study done about 10 years ago, and they found that conservative Christian parents are, who, whose parenting style could be described as authoritative, that, that they raised some of the most well-behaved and adjusted kids. A new researcher that came out and woke up and examined the data from the National Survey of Families and Households discovered that the homes of conservative religious parents were characterized both by strict discipline and by an unusually warm and expressive style of parents' child in the United States. They had that mind. You know, where you can be authoritative, but yet you can be loving. And that's the thing, same thing that our father is <coughs> He's our authority. But he's also there to love us. We can have that loving relationship with him. And, and I want to be like that, amen. I want to be one of them. <laughs> He said, I know it's time, you know, it's after 12. <laughs> I turned around and kind of out. Grandpa. <laughs> he didn't want to leave last night. He came over last night and didn't think he was going to get him go with it. Papa, Papa, Papa. He wouldn't let go of it. He had to open the shirt and pull him off. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll take it while I can. <laughs> but we can learn from even Jesus himself. If we want to be a good loving father or parent or grandparent, there are times to correct. There's times to discipline children. Just before Jesus spoke the famous words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The words just before that, Behold, I stand at the door and stand at the door and knock. And many, I know what he said right before that in Revelation 3 19. He said, As many as I love, I rebuke. And chastity. As many as I love, is what Jesus says. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Guess what? He said, I'm going to rebuke and I'm going to chasten you because I love you, but your job is to be zealous and your job is to repent. Have a change of mind. And then, like the good father, Samuel was there. A good father will discipline. Amen? Amen. I'm going to slide down. We as parents, as fathers, as grandparents, as leaders, we need to make certain that people understand where the fences are. If they don't understand where the fences are, if God's telling you and me to, 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 to share a truth with someone, just like Sister Judy was talking about earlier, about, about you know, hey, hey, when God is, is telling us something, we need to be able to speak up. We need to do what God is telling us to say. Amen? 
But, but guess what? We need to understand that, that there's fences that need to be built that, that people cannot cross. Amen? That we need to understand. And, and a good father will let that child know, guess what? That's where you can't go. You can't go beyond there. Uh, and that was, we, it was a, always the thing when I was a kid. We, we could only go to the park. You had to stay in the park, and you had to stay in eyesight, and you had to be with, we, and you, with the street lights on, you better be in the house. We knew our guidelines, we knew the fences, and we need to set those boundaries for our children so they will understand how far they're allowed to go, amen? If, if we don't tell them what God's Word says, if we don't tell them the things that are important in their life to protect them, amen, they will never know them. They will learn from somebody else the wrong, the, the wrong things. And that's what Samuel did. He, he, he helped them to understand what the fences were. As a matter of fact, his last recorded words to Israel were these in 1 Samuel 12, 24 and 25. He says, only fear the Lord. Only fear the Lord. You don't have to fear me. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all of your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed. Both ye and your king. Samuel was saying, guess what? There's some fences here you need to understand. I guess like a, just like a good father and a good parent, you'll set those fences up. You've got to be firm. You've got to be consistent. You've got to continue to draw those lines and say, this is where the line is. And if you cross this line, there is trouble. Guess what? We, that's part of loving a child. Amen? Many fathers have been known to be harsh and, and insulting. And we don't want to become that way either because it tells us as a leader, it tells us as a father, we need to understand that the any parent, grandparent, whatever, we need to understand, it says, and ye fathers, in Ephesians 6, 4, and ye fathers, for both not your children to write, but bring them up, what? In the nurture and ammunition of the Lord. And then it tells us in Colossians 3 and 1, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. The last thing that I want to do is discourage my child. The last thing I want to do is discourage somebody who wants to grow. Guess what? A good father will discipline, but also a good father will encourage. There are dads in this world who, who see it as they're going like to hold their children under their thumb. Now guess what? You're going to do exactly what I say. I'm on you, boy. I'm on you, man. And you better I mean, so I, I'm all over you, boy. And guess what? We need to understand that we need to speak to them, but we need to love them. God would prefer that we can encourage them. And sometimes parents, fathers, and even Christians can come down on individuals and discourage them instead of encourage them. How oh, a good father will encourage. Good job, son. I'm proud of you, my daughter. Oh, uh, that is, you've done such a good job. Guess what? Sometimes you, you think about yourself in the workforce, in, in the workplace. If the boss is only chewing you, cutting you down all the time, guess what? That discourages you. That keeps you from wanting to, to continue to do right. But, but if you have one that says, guess what? Hey, you messed up. Yes, you need to do this. Uh, I need to discipline you. I need to correct you. But guess what? I want to encourage encourage you. You're doing a good job. I appreciate you trying. I appreciate you showing up. I appreciate what you're doing. Guess what? We need to be encouraged. just like a good father that tells us in 1 Samuel 12 and 22. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake. The Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake because it has pleased the, the Lord to make you his people. Hallelujah. Samuel was encouraging Israel. He was basically, basically saying, guess what? God loves you. And guess what? I say that to you. God loves you. Never forget that. He was also saying, hey, guess what? I don't want to reject you. God don't want to reject you. Guess what? He doesn't want to reject you. Amen. And in fact, he wants, you to, he wants to bring you pleasure. Because it had pleased the Lord. Because it had pleased the Lord. Because it had pleased the Lord. He loves you and me. Amen. Amen. He loves you and me. <coughs> and like a good father, Sammy was there. A good father will just, a good father will encourage. And a good father will walk the walk. I, I'm going to show a quick video here. You got that ready, Brother Roger? You ready? All right. Go ahead, brother. Just like You don't know it right now, but I want you to know. Watch 
Good father will walk the walk. Children are watching us. Good parents will walk the walk. As a father myself, I've been far from cooking. I remember the time where uh, I gathered all my sons together. And I cried. And I asked them to forgive me for all the sins that I made. I love him so much. And so many times I, I wasn't the best father. I made many mistakes. I tried to tell my sons and my grandchildren how much I love them. How much I love them. Let me say, Thorne, then good father was late and I was just talking. Yeah, we got to talk and stop and walk. Talk to the top where you can walk the walk. It's important that we do it. It's important that we walk that our children are watching. People are watching. My dad used to always say, don't do as I do, do as I say. In front of me, we did, we did as he said. <laughs> Behind his back, we did as he did. Daddy did it. It's okay for me. Don't think that people aren't watching us, our children aren't watching us, our neighbors aren't watching us, our people at work aren't watching us. Samuel is basically saying, guess what, I'll lead the way. He challenged Israel to, to find fault in how he behaved. He, he tells us that in 1 Samuel 12, 3, he says, Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or who the ass have I taken? Or who, who, whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or who, of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes when they're with? And I will restore it to you. Yes, but have I done anything? 
that home, I want to restore to you. I want to make it right. I'm telling you, if I have hurt you, what have I done? If I have, I'm sorry. Guess what? Sometimes we can make mistakes. And if we make a mistake, we can learn. We need to learn as a leader, as a father, as a mother, as a child of God. Guess what? That's one of the biggest things to do is I can go say, I'm sorry. I messed up. I'm truly sorry. I don't know about any of you folks, but I've made plenty of mistakes. About 10 years ago, Adam Sandler, he confessed. He said, I think I cursed more on this record than yet. On this record than ever before. Yeah. He said, the album's not too tame. And in real life, though, he said, I'm a little tamer at home. He said, my wife yells at me for that cause. He said that we're, we're going to have a kid. And he said, and I guess I can't curse anymore. He said, I'm, he said, I'm in trouble when my kids grow up. He said, because one of, one of, friends, goes, one of, his, one of his friends goes, hey, hey, listen to your dad's album. He said, I'm dead. <laughs> my kid listens to my album. They hear me cursing and carrying on. He said, I'm dead. He said, there's no way I can win a fight against that kid. You did this. And, and you did that. You said that. Then. I, I'd be like that. And he said, you win. You're right. I don't know how much he's changed. I, I do like, I do admire some of his work. <laughs> uh, I got to admit, I do like some of him. I had Sandra stuff. He's crazy, crazy guy. But at least, I, oh, I hope that he begin to take it to heart. Sometimes it's when people grow up and they get children. And they realize, wait a minute, that child's looking up to me. But either way, I think he realized it's hard to discipline his kid, he didn't change his own behavior. How can I sit up here and preach if I'm not there myself? Lord, help me to be like a good father. Samuel was there, a good father will discipline, a good father will encourage, a good father will walk the walk. And a good father is a good spiritual leader. <laughs> okay. One last verse I'll share with you. <laughs> I think you this. Let me know when it's time. Uh, verse 23 of 1 Samuel 12. As we're talking about a good father and a good spiritual leader. Moreover, as for me. Moreover, as for me. God forbid that I should sin against the Lord and cease to pray for you. Did you hear that? He said that forbid that I should sin against the Lord. Why? in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and right way. Guess what? It, 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 that verse is telling me that it's a sin not to pray for others. It's a, it's a sin not to pray for our children and our grandchildren. It's a, pray, it's a sin not to pray for those that God puts on our heart. Amen. God wants you and me to pray for those. He, he says, forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to, to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and right way. Good Father is a spiritual leader in the household. Probably Verse 4, 1 and 2 says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine, for safety not my law. The Bible tells us that. Yes, so, guess what? Read that. <laughs> the Bible, he said, what is that right there? Can I, what, can I scribble on <laughs> But one of the first commands that God gives, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all, and all thy might. And these words, and these words, verse 6, which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, verse 7, and thou shalt teach, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them. What? When thou sittest in thy house, a lot of people don't do that. We home now. I don't have to talk about God. I can turn on the filthiest stuff and listen to the uh, go in the room, out of the room. They know what they're doing. When my boys were little, I thought it was cool. My buddies would come over. My family would come over. <laughs> Guess what? Boys go to your room. They knew what was going on. They wasn't serious. It wasn't him. When thou sittest in thy house. And when thou walkest by the way, they're watching the way we're walking. They're walking, watch what we're doing in our house. And when thou liest down. 
And when that rises up, could it be that the Lord should say, hey, guess what? You need to be a leader for our children, our grandchildren, people all under us that don't understand things about the Lord. When we're seated at the dinner table, when we walk along the road, when we lay down with them, lay them down to bed at night, God expects us. And when we raise them up in the morning, guess what? We need to help them understand that it's good to pray all throughout the day, that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. He expects us to teach them the good way, the right way. And that's what Samuel was doing as dads. We need not get, to get it completely right, but that's okay. The idea is to try. Amen. I want to try. I got so much more, but I'm going to slide off. <laughs> There's so much good stuff here. Praise the Lord. But you know, God wants us to learn in 50 years. You guys want to see him cry? Are you going to say something? No, I don't know. That's, that's, wrong. that's just wrong. Because anyway, I know what type of reaction I'll get. That's just downright me. But folks, if we, we, we understand how we can treat, sometimes Paul has to say, Right now, he's right there. So he understands. 